Short form fly fishing videos can be ridiculous misrepresentations of what actually happens. That intro montage was our last day in New Zealand before the pandemic. That was the end of us filming exclusively high frame rate video of epic moments. That day sure shows well as a montage, but it misses the 14 hours on the water and how we went about finding 9 or 10 fish over 15 kilometers of river. That kind of puts a different spin on a two minute montage, doesn't it? We finally return to this river to fish and share it our way, slowly poking about to find fish, but also to share its beauty filmed differently. This is a valley in a region that is somewhat of a temptress from a fishing perspective. Spring offers prime water temperatures and flow rates, but there are such narrow windows of opportunity as rain and high wind fronts pound the landscape relentlessly. The weather extremes combined with pushy water over shingly gravel with limited settling and resting habitat limits trout carrying capacity. It quite literally is a game of walking kilometers to find a long and gentle enough shoulder of edge water with one rock that breaks the current just favorably enough for a trout to hold. We timed this visit between fronts, the previous having just cleared as we arrived. The forecast was for the next front to arrive just afternoon the next day with thickening cloud and wind increasing to 120 kilometers an hour. Arriving later on day one, and sure to have day two cut off before we really got going, hopefully we could bring it all together to share the realities of this valley while finding a few trout in each shortened session. It is a nice bit. All this for maybe five or six fish today. And probably 10 kilometers of walking. Your inside's great, but there's only a few rocks. I know. We know this is how this one is. Oh yeah. So on this bit of water, guys, obviously they've, they've put in large riprap and filled it back and rolled it back to protect well, your power, your power tower, but lots of broken rock, but none of it is really effective for trout habitat here. You see a big causeway like that, straight as an arrow in a little bit of a ditch, right? And there's no deflections out. This is, this is one of the few. So until you get up here or on Amelia's side over there, um, you're basically looking at just in the middle out there it's all fine sand and gravel and that's why as you're walking um, you can rule most of that out because the fish isn't going to sit there going like this all day it wants current breaks and current breaks are king when it comes to these waters well every trout stream if you don't got them you don't got fish that's why in floods when the water levels get too high well it pushes fish really pushes them to swim and if you're in a gorge or a canyon and if the back eddies and pools aren't strong enough those fish are just going to get washed out and in big floods big enough floods there's a point breaking point to every river where if the waters come high enough if you take a google earth macro landscape perspective of things every river becomes a box canyon and if you get a flood in a box canyon at any point, that pushes, pushes the oldest fish and the, and the youngest fish. And that's why you end up with a very uniform centric population uh, the, 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 the coming year or two after a humongous flood. But in this case, my money is my side of the head, or you can just see some subtle, subtle current breaks and deflections along that broken rock on Amelia's side. But because we're early in the season, um, not a lot of terrestrial food, not a lot of in-stream uh, bugs, for lack of better words, I don't really expect a lot there. I'd expect them to be associated or within uh, short swim escape cover distance from the prime 
current breaks up here. So it's just left straight across from the tip of this rock. Okay. On your edge of the current, there's a deeper, not that orangey one there, but a deep cream one there. Yeah. And I've seen it move a couple times. Okay. Yeah, I gotta come around, it's definitely a fish. Yeah, it's moved out. The trouble is it's about four feet down. <laughs> and not a big fish, might be three, four pounds. Okay, which is a, exactly on target to where we figured the fish would be. And especially after a cold night, because we came off last night's hike frozen. We were out on the river, we got up at six o'clock yesterday morning, and we drove for an hour to get up to the high country and it was frosty where we were even early december um which is summer here in new zealand <laughs> and we started walking at seven o'clock and we started fishing got up to the top and we were at the top of the valley fished through and then went for a hike of our favorite hill and got out at 9 30 drove half an hour 10 o'clock and got to bed about midnight after having supper so a bit of a later start this morning but it's cold yeah boy you'd never see it from here uh, i thought i was gonna say i think i've seen it based on your description so if you look there's uh, i'm coming off this side always long, a yeah. long dark shadow of a rock there <laughs> off it's just just oh, behind no. off its left side no it's actually off the right side of it oh wow right there see it just move just you look right on the right side of that yep. dark and yep. go right there he just went to the right oh he's in that okay. space he's yeah, filling that it. void i see that now too. that's I deep see, though okay that is deep dave ah i'll rig up the double nymph yep that's that's awesome i do okay guys so to complete the thought um because it's been co so cold overnight um uh, these fish are deeper just go figure and because the fish are deeper, I had a great line on the on the light from the other side. I come over here and it's just nothing but glare, right? You can't see squat, especially through GoPro. Right now I can see through my sunglasses. But we know it's deeper. It was cold. Strike indicator. And what's that? About three and a half feet to the first fly and another foot to the second fly. Uh, both are smaller-ish flies, but both have oversized tungsten uh, beads on them why depth baby depth because you want to throw rocks at this fish because a rock is the only thing that's going to get that down and that fish is right ahead of me covering that rock swaying to and fro and there he is Oh, he looked hard. You got him. <laughs> how do yeah, I know man. he looked hard? Well, <laughs> that's, you how you know. <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know. I heard you. Literally, I heard you say that, and then I saw your indicator. Yeah, I was like, hey, yeah, he's, he's like, looking. You know yeah. how you know, Dave? The second part of these fantastical runs of no current breaks is there's no current breaks. <laughs> if you get where we're going, People say, you guys never nymph, you guys never do this, you guys never do that. No, we do. We just fish based on fish behavior. And if you fish the fish behavior, well, sometimes you catch the fish. Cheapers. He's a heavy little bugger, hey? Yep, that's a good fish. It's a solid little chunka. Oh yeah. If you can keep him there, you'll tire him. And the alligator roll. There we go. Look at, that's a good start. I bet you that's four and a half pounds. Oh wow, I thought it was gonna be more. Five on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, that like that little thing is a five pound fish. That makes sense to me. So guys, we are just discussing that this is actually, it is really good water. It's a very broken rock bottom. But the point that we're making here is that you actually have to have the escape cover for fish with depth. Um, that's where we're finding them. This is, you know, it, it, yeah, sure, it's good feeding water, but where's the depth for them to go to? Maybe up there, it gets a little deeper along Dave's bank, but it's quite fast. And browns really like that slower bit of water. And especially when waters are low, they need the depth. 
So a little more about reading water, guys. Again, where I suspect in here is that calm, flat edge that ha that's right off of the depth on the outturn there, or probably more towards the head here, because this is still very fast with not a lot of rock to hold to. Um, there's always, a, you know, there's, there's a bit of an incline actually to this particular stretch of river right here too. You can, you can see it, you can feel it. Getting a bit of height here guys, so I can get the broad spectrum view of, of this, because you can see real well. And you'd see a fish come out and sway along these rocks on the edge. Pretty sure we both feel that it will be at the head again where you've got the depth, the escape cover. But that's the thing about sight fishing is that you kind of start with your broad spectrum view of it all and looking ahead and seeing what you see from a larger expanse. And then you break it down into smaller chunks and smaller areas where you're looking specifically on certain rocks and certain current breaks and certain edges. And that's really what it's all about out here. That's so neat guys. Talk about a broad spectrum view I was talking about. So we're up here and way up ahead of us. That's, I don't know, easily, what is that? 40, 50 yards anyway. On the inside, across the way, there's a couple bigger creamy rocks and there's two fish that are just swaying and you can see them from up here plain as day as they cover those rocks. Ooh, that one, that one closest to us is really giving her, hey? Exactly where you'd think they'd be. Oh, they are. They are. And they're not far apart not down so, there. They're so. going to be like <laughs> maybe three yards apart if yeah. we're lucky. You walk two you know? kilometers, nothing, yeah. nothing, nothing. Oh, Harry, there's Boom. two within a rod leg. That's now right. Split those up, right? Oh, yeah. Really? I yeah, know. Let's just hope the one, you know, with how, how much spunk these fish have had, like Dave's fish jumping oh. and fighting hard. It's a funny angle, I'll be honest, for sighting. Yeah. That's just real. All right, here we go. Oh, did he yeah. look? Oh, he I, looked. I, I, it went down, so. Yeah, he followed it, love. Yeah. It, I lost sight of him, and he dropped like a rod and a half with your... <laughs> nymphs to eat. I and I it went down and I sat. Sorry I, I lost sight of him. It's okay got that's it. not on you. Just gonna wait on that gust so I get a better view of him and then I'll go. Yep that's the bottom fish. Yes! Woo! Ha <laughs> ha yeah man. That's still a really good fish. That's awesome. Bring him over, maybe back him up here. That's my hope is back him up. Come on, you're running out of real estate here. Head up. In the net. Yes. All right. Woo! Yeah, you're four on the nose. Yeah, that was definitely that outside fish, eh? I'm so glad I followed that drift and then saw that indicator go down because this fish was swinging so hard. Okay, side channels. This guy's just the top end of, of this little seam here. I don't think it's a big fish, a couple pounds. And I'm just in behind that orangey rock. Let's see here. Ah, uh, shy. Oh, had him. He dropped. He dropped. I misjudged the cast. I didn't get the cast I wanted. And I put it in there and he dropped six feet to eat it. Okay. No, he's there. Yeah, now it's a project. Okie dokie, it's probably deeper and I'm probably not deep enough, but let's go see. That's him there, hey? Okay, let's lead him a touch. 
There we go. Oh, that's way fatter hay than you than it looked. Fish. Yeah, hot and fat again. Not that big of a project. No. Beat him with that the that is way bigger. heavier than I thought it was. And again, hell, no current brakes. Holy man. I shouldn't maybe have a size 16 nymph on, but I do. Something tells me we might be going a ways. Yeah, might be visiting your pool. Oh, 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 oh. Can I keep them here? Rotate a boo around. Keep them in there. Keep them in there. There we yeah. go. Woo. Woo. Well done, Dave. A timely come over to the bank, well fish. Well done wasn't actually much of a fight it was just a big fat sluggo at four and a half, and a half yeah eight. wicked there you go gorgeous fish man oh man hey just fat that's beautiful. so healthy this year oh yeah say when you're ready yeah that's gorgeous and if you want to let him go there you can did you pan the body already oh i already have okay love yeah. here then here we go yeah beauty go. okay down up and away we go right. wicked man it's just fat Okay, guys, I'm just going to show you this big floodplain and obviously a, a side braid, a side braid over here. But if you come back here, right, where's the fish in this going to hold? Where? Maybe there. It has to be hard, hard rock with good depth and trough and, and, and. Well, that's where the side channel comes back in. And that's what makes reading these rivers so easy is, well, where's the trough? Where's the broke? The hard edge is on the inside with a rock or just underneath where the current starts to taper right down there with the deeper water, a uh, couple of hard rocks in under the current flow where it's kind of softer. And well, that's exactly where you're going to find these fish. So as I walk up here, guys, you see there's a trough along shore. You got to really pay attention to the top side of a clump like that. As you come here, you're just looking for a dark head on the top side of it. That's it. Same, same goes for the next one up above. And out here again, you see this, this fine gravel. It's like a frickin' sidewalk out there. So right here, you're looking for... Likely at the head, eh? Yeah, well, I hope so. But you gotta watch right in here as you're coming slowly over this clump of grass, the top side of these slumped pillows. That, I mean, people say, oh, that's New Zealand. Ah, uh, that's anywhere. That's literally Alberta, Montana, Patagonia, anywhere. Uh, any of those slough banks. Most people want to fish the downstream side of it. Um, half the time, the fish are on the top side of it. Yeah, there's too much down the middle, but that's not a fish, that's a rock. Yeah, there'd be movement here, hey? Have to be. And what we mean by have to be is <laughs> if a fish holds holding in that water, it's got to be moving. Otherwise, it ain't going to be here. Because um, you don't just... At the head on your side. No? Okay. But the amount of available habitat here is pretty small, really. Like escape, resting cover. They've not been in this, this stuff, hey? That's four fish. So another spot on a floodplain river is exactly what I'm coming into now. Now the problem with these rivers is obviously in high water, which happens with rains or runoff, this is just all push. And yeah, a mid-river shelf like that is spectacular in summer and stable flows, but any other time of year there's gonna be a lot of variance pushing the fish around and we're a bit more stable right now but it's not summer 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 um there could easily be a fish but i would definitely put it up in here because again it's 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 fine gravel it's there's no hard rock right where the the great drop off zone in is you know, this line right off, just out from my rod tip, it's not like there's a great series of hard rocks there. And with that sun, you'd be seeing the shadows on the bottom. 
and if there's no dark shadow moving doing anything then probably not here okay so here is kind of a nice nice sidewall of raised gravel here and before i can actually get to my spotting spot it's still i'm at eye level with the water and now what's happening is you get a bit of a reflection from that white cloud and a bit of haze and it's at this point uh, i want to go laterally i want to go this way but if i do that the gopro is going to flash <laughs> so i gotta gotta be mindful of that as i come around and start kind of rotating over here get that over and hopefully not flash anybody because the sun's kind of at this angle so i'm flashing that angle all while taking you fishing with me okay i think i there's a dark smudge right there i can barely make it out just right off, not even a rod length offshore looks. Yeah, I'm looking at the same thing right Oh, that's a fish. Yeah, 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 that's a fish. Oh, he missed it. He missed it. He came up. Oh man, guys, my dry fly, he came up, a wave curled it and I saw it go right past his left eye. He's gone home. Jeepers, he wanted that dry fly though. He's home, guys. I've got a dropper nymph. Let's see what happens here. Got him on the nymph. Beauty. That's a decent fish again. Ooh, this might be a rodeo. Come on. In you come, in you come, in you come. Let's keep you in. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's a long fish. That's cool, guys. Ended up getting him on the old copper tail. Beauty. Just a beauty. And I don't think he's that big. I'd say four because he's very long and skinny. Got a biggish head, but long and skinny. And what do we got? Yeah, he's four on the nose. Down up go. Okay, awesome. And away he goes. Fun fish, guys. If at first that dry fly, he comes for it and the wave of water goes and he it just slides right past his the top of his left eye kind of on his forehead there um well go for it again with your dropper nymph and that's exactly what i did and it was a funny hookup i'll be honest because my dry fly had come through and he kind of had dropped and i saw that the dry had gone down but I wasn't initially going, does he really have it? It was a very odd moment, but then it was down enough and I set and it was, it was in his mouth and, and away we go. So it was just kind of one of those delayed things. But again, it's funny as an angler, you have to go with your gut sometimes and just go, yeah, I think he's got it. Even if the water, you can't see in, you don't have a firm, you know understanding yeah my dry went down but it was a, a odd timing with when the fish was moving okay so you walk another couple of hundred meters and you have another inside flat last time we were here Amelia got a nice fish just up in there but that was also against that bank up there before this all shifted that's the whole thing about floodplain waters is they shift massively especially in places like this where the Floods come through massively. It's all you love. Yeah. Remember, you got one on that side last time, but it was up by that slough bank up there. Yeah, this whole this whole thing has shifted 80 meters this way. 
but there could still be <laughs> we don't sound too thrilled about it but it was so much better over there when the creek was over there so as the weather starts to shift uh, you get some high cloud and with high cloud is more glare obviously but the other thing that happens is with that wind you get a shimmy of glare which yeah i agree with you which that shimmy on top of of um glare is just removes the best spotting and it, it's still better than a cloudy day but it gets tough well even a puff cloud like that does that to the water <laughs> so that's the kick with this isn't it and i can't really much move Okay guys, so you got this braid here, you got the far braid way over this gravel bar, and that's where Amelia just came from, and I got this one right here, and this is the only one that has the perfect trough coming down the middle, and look at that, in the back end right out here on a rock right in the middle of the trench at the tail out is a nice flagging tail brown, so yeah, you see I'm about a rod length below that white rock, hey? Right in the middle. Yeah. The hard part of this one's going to be seeing it from that vantage. Yeah, hey. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. He, he should We're, eat though. Yeah. Assuming nobody else has been here today or recently, uh, the way the fish have acted today, you know, it's it. Yeah, look at him go away eh? right over that tail is going. So, yeah, I'll try to get down and again just a sedge with a copper tail dropper, and I've gone with a bit, bit of a bigger copper tail dropper just to make sure that uh, I have a wider hook gap on that. Uh, not huge, but just a big enough hook gap might not be the easiest bugger to see no no kidding because i actually have to get down off the step as i because otherwise i'm going to be too high above it yeah, yeah so looks like he's real active but we'll see what it looks like when we're in casting position okay swing that out bring that back and what i like to do guys is just make sure i just kind of go like this with that elk hair on that. It's an ornery little wind behind me. Okay, there he is there. I'm really struggling to pick him up from here. Oh, there he is right there. On the dry. Oh, yeah. He took that dry fly. Beauty, Dave. Wicked awesome nice he dropped out and it was I like i was well, gonna say where that landed wow. yeah he he dropped out and flagged right in front of me it was like well take him right now if he's gonna do that i've now taken three casts today <laughs> that's perfect right that's i like that it. i mean a we've, a fish. we've walked three kilometers for me to take three casts so i'm trying to fold them over guys um healthy fish but just a little too chunky for his own good, I think. Come on, doesn't want to raise. They never want to raise, Davy. Not until they're ready to fold, fold. No. It almost feels silly because it's head to the rock and ass to the air, you know? Yep. Kind of like tree planting. Head down, ass up. If you've never tree planted, you'll never know what the hell I'm talking about. There you go. Beauty. Nice. That little two and a half, three pound frame is probably going to be three, three quarter to four and a quarter. Oh, yeah. Four flat. So in this case here, guys, like I was saying from the top where right up where Amelia is right now, which is where we were first saw it and first everything, you come around here and you look up and the only thing that you can see, and I've got polarized glasses, so you probably can't see it. Maybe you can. And the right in line with that rod there is a white creamy rock on the bottom. And that fish was half a rod length downstream in here. And I walked up a little bit after landing it, but that fish was holding in between, dropped down to here, 
And I was like, well, okay, if you're gonna drop that far down, here, have my dry fly. <laughs> but it's absolutely amazing, guys, how different the viewing and what you can see from down there, because you come up here, and now you can see every rock in that hole. And of course there was a fish there. You know, after high water or whatever, uh, as the water gets lower, there's just a trough there. Well, guess where there's gonna be a fish given how little habitat's in this river. So this is a situation, guys, where you're coming into a decent tail out of a run that from back here looks decent to me. I can even see a bit of a trough down the tail out here. So yeah, you know, you wanna step up from where I am here. I'm actually coming up the river you just want to step up slowly and give a really good scan from back here before you charge in to the heart of that run. Because often, so often, we've seen a brown trout in a tail out, especially if it's a decent run. I don't know if this will have enough depth. Yeah, so thoughts to this. We're losing our light, but it's a great looking run. We're losing our light. <laughs> I know. Wind, cloud, high cloud, thicker cloud. Yeah. It's going to show up flaggy or dark yes i think we still have enough that it's yeah. going to be a dark shadow if it's here i think so too this looks like a, a sandy bit on the inside and don't expect it here up against that white rock yeah. on the far side i think it will be far side, far side. as well yeah i agree oh it's uh it's there's a, there's it's a real band light. of high cloud right now oh there it's is just there terrible. just super is guys like look at that above dave yes Ooh. And then you say, well, why don't you just wait, sit and wait 15 minutes? Because mm. you're not going to see nothing right now. No, you're just not. Yeah, we may get that strip of blue here off the edge. <sighs> may. May. It's a big May. But we're, yeah, we're just in the But the, we're in good heaviest, water, so. We're in the heaviest high cloud right I know, now. I know. Sucks. Oh, I would have thought something here by now, oh. especially just across the way. But the broken rock is more on the head on the other side. So. Yeah, there is that too, right? And we're getting our light better and better as we go here, so. Yeah. But yeah. I agree. Wait, 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 wait a second. What? Is that, is that moving? No, no it's not. I just eliminated it. Yep, no. You got to exactly where I it's, was when it's I was funny because I thought I've passed looking at it. I thought, did that fish just come in there? No, it's not a fish. That's actually hard to believe there's nothing here yet, but yep. we've been down this road. Oh, there he was. Where? I told you. Oh boy. Just this hey. side of that white rock. He's actually right there. That is him right there. Right there. Okay. Two, yeah. Just two feet to the left of that. He's on a brown rock right there. See, there's kind of a greeny yeah. rock, then kind of a brown. He's yeah. right in there. Okay. That, oh, I he see just what went. you're looking at. Did he go to that, his right? Yeah. That green. Fed to his right. That green glow yeah, in there. Yeah, I the see fish. him there. Okay. Can I come sure, please do. Okay. He was short, eh? He, oh, he's short. He's right here. Do you see right in these yeah. creamy, like he's just above. He's, he's on he's, more he's, on so the. So these two creamies yeah. on the edge of this brown yeah. go up four feet and out. He's kind of right in there. Well, you just green, saw him. That green rock. Yeah. If you cast just yeah. out from that. That's that where I've rock. been, but yeah. I, but I think I I got to go back. deeper. Just try again. I just want to see yeah. where you're casting. If you don't okay. mind. Sure. It's nothing personal. I'm just. Okay, you went way it's right perfect there. Perfect there. That's over his zone though. Yeah, he was way right though. Yeah. Okay. Cast again. He was. Way I right. see what you mean. He, he went way to the right. So he's way over there yeah, right now. Yeah. That might have a chance if he's chance. coming. Yeah. And yes. got him. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> that did help. Oh man. Yeah, that movement wasn't easy for me to see until you said it, you know? It's kind of one of those bizarre bits. Yeah, I gotta love Dave's eyes, guys. I have always I loved love. his eyes. Yeah, he, was, he was all over the front. No, oh, he was. Oh! Got in. He head shaked and out comes that dry. It was, I will say this, it was actually an at me take, yeah. guys. The fish did come up again last minute because he was coming over from the right. He saw my drift into home plate. 
he came over, turned, took, and that head was at me. So in a way that uh, unfortunate, um, you know, come off is because of that. I'm convinced of that. You want the hindsight 2020? Sure. The hindsight 2020 is I think you had to cast further right. Yeah. Really swaying that way. Yeah. The hindsight 2020, which is never what, it's not fair. Um, is go way over. Yeah. Because he was really booking it across and coming back over. Yeah. So if you'd let him that way, which is his preferred feeding side, because he was holding deep against this rock under the current, but really feeding that way, you could have let him that way across, and he either eats it as it's coming down, or he eats it going away, which gives you that hook set. Instead, you're on the inside. Yeah. And. Not, and in hindsight, again, we didn't understand he was feeding way over and holding here. Yeah. We didn't know that he wasn't coming over to feed. It yeah. Reversed. That's just it. Like, I ended up drawing him. I didn't necessarily think I'd be drawing him. That's the truth of that, as Dave said. When I noticed that he was as far over as he was, I was already mid-drift, I would say. I think that's oh, yeah. accurate, really. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, he was coming home. And he saw it last minute, turned and took it, and that eat was at me. So that's, I'm sure, why it popped off. <laughs> okay, we got a dark smudge in this pocket. Almost walked past it, but Dave, with his keen eye, saw that one move. And then when he pointed it out, I saw it move. He is pacing primarily. Right there, feeding out. Yeah, feeding out. So I still feel that my dry flies have to be on the inside seam that actually drifts down to Where are you him. standing? <laughs> Ooh, that's the tough part here too. This, I don't want any of this mud. I'm not gonna step in there. I think I've gotta kinda go out to the river right about out there. And what are you, gonna and, be, what do you know you're gonna see him. when you get out there? Nothing. That's right. And that's the <laughs> hardest part of this. So You could do a bit of a, a put in and reach. No. But then you're going to put your fly line all over the top yeah, of the fish. The, the sun's way off left. Yeah. That fish, guys, just so you know, is right mm -hmm. out there. It's on the other side of the foam line underneath the main current seam. It's about two and a half, three feet down. It's kind of comes shallow, but you don't want to rely on them coming shallow. Mm -hmm. And so my recommendation is mm -hmm. going to be that you go all the way down mm -hmm. into that flowy water out. Because yep. if you come back here, and you enter here, come, yeah. come, come, here. come with the camera. Yeah. If you come here, keep coming with the yeah. camera. Right about here, here, this stuff here is gonna suck yeah. mud that, that way. That mud. Don't you don't want, want that. that. No. So you're gonna have to come down there, yep. go out, walk up the seam line, and knowing that you're fully glared out, not gonna see. Yep. You're gonna have to rely on my eyes. Yep. With a bushier dry fly that you can see, which I yes. think that medium sedge is, yep. and rely on the nymph tape. Yeah, and that makes total sense to me. Okay, well, we're gonna have a go together. <laughs> yeah, this is a situation where having a buddy is helpful. Okay, guys, now I've got actually uh, just a big old beetle pattern with a different nymph that's a little deeper dropper. So, let's see what this does for us okay here we go coming yep 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 you saw his white of his mouth and your fly went down He's still there love okay wait for the light yeah it's gone now okay guys we're gonna see if he wants yeah. to go at a big old green stone fly nymph Okay. Indicator almost landed on his head. Okay. Yep. Woo! Woohoo! Woohoo! Awesome. I'm going to keep you in here. Yeah, let's keep you in this pool. Far from over. Wow, he's got some gumption going straight up that. 
Yeah, come on back. What a fish. Come on. Come on back. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it here somewhere, buddy. Nope, that's not gonna work either. Woo, down he goes. Guess I'm going down. I got him here. Will you let me lift your head? Come on, into my net, into my net. Yes, yes, oh, 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 oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man, woo! All right. That's the fish I wanted. He's five on the nose. What? Yep. 